What is going on guys, DBG here, and in this video I'm going to be giving my opinion on these cards, the Auto Star cards, and whether they're going to be worth buying or not. First of all, I'm going to go over the Collection Reward, and it's a 97 overall Vince Carter. This would have been a pink diamond previous weeks, but it's now a diamond, and with eight, only 80 intangibles, it's probably a 99 overall or 98 overall. But this card looks like the best card in the game. 94 open shot 3, 95 speed, 95 acceleration, 99 vertical, 99 driving dunk, 3 hall of fame badges, tireless scorer, lob city finisher and posterizer, 13 gold badges. This card is possibly one of the top 2 or 3 players in the game. I genuinely can't, don't, can't think of a player except for that pink diamond Kobe that's a better card than it right now. So if you have the money to complete all this collection, this reward card is definitely, definitely worth getting. The first player up is Gerald Green. This card actually doesn't look too good. Obviously a 95 driving dunk is exceptional, but it only has 3 gold badges. 85 open shot 3 is good. 88 speed, 87 acceleration, not too bad. Decent enough on defense. Like this is a card that you should definitely pick up if it's less than 2 or 3 or 4k. This is going to be the cheapest and it's probably going to be around that. And this is a card you should pick up if it's that price, but if it ends up being up around 10k because it's Gerald Green, I'd give it a pass, but at around 5k, you might as well try this card out and see if you like it. Next up, we have got Marco Bellinelli. This card is probably, actually this card is probably going to be the cheapest. This card plays, actually not too bad defense, 77 on ball. Four badges, four really nice shooting badges, except it does have a cold spot right in the middle, but not the biggest deal. Four really nice shooting badges. Um, and incredible shooting stats. 89 open shot mid, 94 open shot 3, 93 contested shot 3. This card is just going to be a catch and shoot guy and one of the best catch and shoot guys in the game. And it's a no brainer to buy this card, even as a backup to just have on your bench for the year, someone to come on and just hit a shot. This card is a no brainer, definitely a pickup. Next up, we have got Kenneth Fareed. Kenneth Fareed is a rebounder in real life, and this card is a rebounder. Like, speed 70, not the best, especially for a 6A power forward. Speed with ball 37, really, this card is going to struggle. 90 driving dunk, 95 standing up is great, especially with those gold badges, hustle rebounder and posterizer. But, to be honest, this card has got nothing really going for it. Can't shoot, is undersized, isn't too fast, it can dunk, but really, what? it doesn't have that much going for it. There's a lot of better cards, and to be honest, I will probably end up trying this card out if it's about 2k MT, which is probably will be, but as using in the higher seeds, I might be completely wrong, this card could be exceptional when it comes out, but really I can't see any reason to use this card because there's better options for cheap, and there's much better options that are still cheap enough. Next up we have got definitely what looks like one of the best of all the rubies. Four shooting badges, same four as Bellinelli, catch and shoot corner specialist, deep range deadline limitless range, four really good badges. And just look at these shooting stats, 95 open shot mid, 97 open shot 3, 95 off dribble shot 3, 80 on ball defense which isn't bad, good ball control, good speed with ball, 87 driving lap isn't great but isn't bad for a spot up shooter and you, the only thing that lets this card down is the fact it's 6 foot 3 but with 80 speed and 80 on ball defense, well it's not high at all, it could definitely be used as a point card. If this card is less than 10k, again it's a no brainer to at least try out. If you don't like it, you'll be able to sell it, but if it's less than 10k, definitely pick it up, and even if you don't like it, sell it back. It's a no-brainer, it has to be tried out at less than 10k, just because of how good its stats is. Next up, we've got what possibly is going to be one of the most fun cards in the game, and it's Nate Robinson. 98 driving dunk, 97 speed, 97 acceleration, 89 open shot 3. This card is very, very like this card here, but it's just better in most ways. It comes with 13 gold badges, catch and shoot corner specialist, deep range deadly, difficult shots, limitless range, mid range deadly, acrobat, ankle breaker, and only a silver posterizer though. But this card is going to be incredible. I know it's only 5 foot 9, and to be honest, as in usefulness, it's probably not going to be most useful. But in terms of fun, this is a card that is going to be so fun to use, and it's definitely a card I would recommend picking up if it's around the 15 20k mark. If this card is up a 40k, no, don't pick it up because he's 5'9". But if he's around 15, 20k, pick him up. He's going to be a fun card to use. And who knows, he could just be an absolute beast in game. Next up, we've got George Mikan, who's an undersized center. Not great rebounding stats. Um, decent, good post hook, 90. Decent most fadeaway, 85. 
isn't too slow, but doesn't have great speed with ball. Can shoot a little bit, but no, there's no real reason to pick it up. Obviously, a 94 block is good, but he's 6 foot 10, so it's not really that important. But yeah, I definitely would just dodge this card. So now we're on to Shaq. You're looking at it, and you're thinking, oh, this is a great card. 95 standing dunk, it's Shaq, 90 post hook. But I'm hoping this has changed. It's got three Amethyst badges, a brick wall, bruiser, drop stepper, which are good to have. 90 blocks, good. 7 foot 1, not great rebounding at 86. Speed 50, which isn't great. And if you look at all the other Shaqs, 99 strength. Hopefully, I'm guessing this will be changed, but 85 strength. If this isn't changed, there is no point in buying this Shaq because, well, this Shaq mainly just has good playmaking for some reason. But yeah, like if this Shaq has 85 strength, there's no point buying this Shaq because if it's 85 strength, is it really Shaq? Tom Chambers is normally a really good card in 2K. A little bit of a weird release, but when you get used to it, it's actually really good. Posterizer, um, Hamethyst is a really good badge to have. Not too fast, is a power forward. Good, good enough rebounding that'll get that'll get away with being as a stretch, use a stretch four. But yeah, this is a card where again, if it's cheap, I'd say pick it up and try it out. But if this card is more than 25k, just leave it. It dunks really well, but on everything else, it's not exceptional. It's decent at everything, but not incredible at everything. So again, if it's around the 20k mark, I'd pick it up. If not, I'd give it a pass. This card is nothing special, especially at this time of the game. Next up, we have got Dirk Nowitzki. And this card looks great. 98 post fadeaway, 88 post hook. Which means even though post fadeaways aren't as cheesy as they normally are in this year's game, 88 post hook still great. 90 open shot 3, 96 open shot mid, 96 contest shot mid, meaning that fadeaway is going to be money. This card has got good rebounding, 83 defense rebound, 78 offense rebound, 7 foot tall. For some reason, Dirk's goal card is 7 1, this card 7 foot. The Ruby 7 foot, and so is this. So for some reason, Dirk's goal card is actually an inch bigger than all the others. I don't really get it, won't get why, but yeah, this Dirk card actually looks exceptional. And with mid-range dead eye and pick and popper and hot zones nearly everywhere, again, I would definitely pick this card up to try at around the 40k mark. Anything above that, probably not worth it, but around the 40k mark, this card can be used as a great, great stretch five, especially with how overpowered corner jump shots are with centers. Next up, we have got a card that I'm just going to say buy, buy, unless it's over 100k. Like, if this card is what normal amethysts are, about 60k, buy it, if you have the money. This is MJ, 95 speed, 95 acceleration, 70 open shot 3 isn't bad. And if you've ever used MJ in any 2k, you know that an MJ with a 70 open shot 3 is really about 80. Badges, it's got two Hall of Fame badges, tire score, relentless finisher, two of the most important ones for a slasher, 98 driving dunk. 96 draw fell as well as an 86 free throw, 92 on ball defensive IQ, 92 steal, 68 intangibles, meaning that this card realistically is about a 94, 95 overall diamond. This is probably the best card I've seen in this collection and without doubt it is a must buy if you have the coins and unless this card is something ridiculous like 90 plus K, if it's around the 50, 60 K mark, it is a must buy because it's Jordan, it's animations are good, Jordan always plays better than the overall stats. And now we are on to the diamonds, we are on to Blake Griffin. This card has got two Hall of Fame badges, it's got a Lob City finisher and posterizer, 86 speed, 80 acceleration, really good open shot mid, 92, 70 open shot 3, 98 driving dunk, 98 standing dunk, really good rebounding stats. If this card's under 100k, and you have the MT, you should probably, you should definitely give it a try because it could be a really, really good card, especially that 92 post of 92 boss fadeaway. But if this card is like what the Diamond Rose and Diamond Penny are and 200k, just don't pick it up because it's going to be way too expensive. But if it's cheap, definitely, definitely, I'd give it a try. Last up, we have got Dwight Howard. 90 speed for a center. You'd think, oh, this is incredible, but... In previous years, 90 speed would make them so overpowered because they could rebound and push the floor. 31 speed with ball kind of makes that 90 speed a little bit worse. 97 offensive, 97 defensive rebound, which is really good. 67 free throw, which is actually good for Dwight Howard. 97 driving dunk, 98 standing dunk. This guy is definitely, definitely one of the best centers in the game. Again, this is another one where if this card's around the 100k mark, definitely, definitely pick it up. 
If it's around that D-Rose price of 250k, it is going to be a pass. And it probably will be because of how good that Vince Carter card is. So, unless you're going for Vince Carter, I would not spend more than maybe 150k on this player because it is only six he is only six foot eleven, meaning that he's still gonna get out rebounded by people like Yao. So anyway, that's the video. This is just my opinion on what cards you should and shouldn't pick up. Um, this collection actually seems very well rounded and none of the cards are bad and none of them are really standouts. It's just my opinion whether I think they're gonna be worth picking up, worth trying out. But if you see a card that you think is going to be good and it's been in your price range, you want to try it out, go ahead. Just because I don't think that it's going to be worth it doesn't mean that it's not worth it. Every You should probably just use this video as a little bit of a guideline, but definitely don't make decisions solely based on this video. Unless it's like picking up a ruby that's a 1.5 thousand M2. So anyway, that's the video. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe.